Hey, and welcome to my channel. My name is Amber Sharnice. If you are new and if you're not here, girl, hey, thank you so much for returning back to the channel. So today's video is going to be a little different. It's not going to be like most of the videos here on the channel. In today's video, we're actually going to be doing a camera review, you guys. I just purchased a new gadget, which is this Sony ZV-E1, and I definitely want to share this little new gadget with you guys. I will say this, I am not a professional photographer, I'm not a prof professional videographer, I don't know anything about creating movies and all that good stuff. So that's why I actually kind of felt like my review would actually be useful for all the girls and the guys that are just YouTube vloggers, we're not camera pros or anything like that, and you just want to know the real tea on this actual camera and should you buy it. So if you want to get a live review from someone that's using the camera the exact same way that you would use it, not for all this other fancy mumbo jumbo stuff, then you're in the right place. So stay All right, you guys. So we have made it outside and I'm going to be giving you guys some image tests, some quality tests and outdoors, I guess. Um, I'm going to be using this camera like I would if I were vlogging a regular video. Like you guys, like I said before, I vlog, okay? And I'm going to do vlog style content. So I might as well give you guys a test of the quality in vlog style as well. This is the ZVE1. This is the 15 millimeter lens. And I'm going to go ahead and pop the cap off. Push the power on. We're just going to switch it to the on here. And because I have my Sony grip hooked up to it, I'm just going to repress the record from here. So this is me recording from the Sony ZV-E1 with the 15 millimeter lens. Um, and as you guys can probably see, there's some weird situations going on in the corner of the video. So like I told you guys before, this is the APS-C lens. And, it's, and because we're using it on a full frame camera, you can still see a lot of vignetting around. So what we do to get rid of that is super easy, actually. We just pretty much punch in to 1.5, um, which is basically zooming the, the clear image into 1.5. And boom. The craziness on the sides are gone and we are good to go as far as vlogging now. So this is what the image is giving at the very moment. If we swipe up on the bottom of the screen here, I can tell you right now, I do not have any picture profiles on. So this is literally straight out of the camera, what it looks like. All right, you guys, we had to change locations because apparently there's a bee that was challenging me in my own backyard this is the sony zve one i am in direct sunlight okay you guys and uh, like i said i have on no picture profiles or anything so i kind of want to like go through the picture profiles real quick just so y'all can see the different i guess styles of colors and things that the uh, camera does offer and by the way the camera right now is in intelligent auto so if you're one of those people that just want to get up and go you don't want to go ahead and switch settings and things like that that's not something that you you know typically care about then this is what the camera is going to look like fresh out okay so i'm going to um i'm going to go ahead and turn on manual mode to show you a few of the, of the different picture profile all right guys so right now i have it in aperture priority mode that's pretty much going to automatically adjust my iso which shows how bright and dark the picture is and everything because i don't like to have to do all that it's really annoying but i can adjust everything else so that's pretty cool I am going to go ahead and swipe up at the bottom of the screen so I can change the picture profile, which is right now at picture profile 11. That is what it looks like. Now we're going to go over to picture profile 10. That is what it looks like at, out here in direct sunlight. So I'm in picture profile 6. Picture profile 5. Picture profile number four. I can't not 100% see the screen because the sun is killing my eyes right now, but that looks like it looks kind of good. I can't really tell though. Picture profile number three. About, this is picture profile number two. Picture profile number one. And picture profile is back off. So this is what she looks like. 
I do want to mention to you guys that it's currently 86 degrees out here. Um, for I've had this camera for about a week now, and I have not had any temperature issues with it, and I've been using it off and on constantly. Okay, I'm just trying to test out picture and image quality and things like that. So far, so good, but I guess today we'll be really putting it to the test to see if it's going to give me any type of overheating issues. I'm just going to be honest, you guys, with Sony cameras, they always overheat. I've had two Sony ZV-1s. I've had a Sony alpha 5400 5100 i think and i've had heating issues with all my sony cameras um, i rarely get heating issues on my canon 90d and before i had the canon 90d i had the i think it was the t7i and like i said i never really get overeating issues with my canon sony's yes so <laughs> it's not a surprise or shock to me that people are having overheating issues but it does become a problem when you can't properly function or or get your footage because your camera is constantly overheating like i said i've had those problems with the camera that we're on right now i'm surprised it has not shown overheating so if this shows overheating before this does then we have a problem <laughs> another key feature i like to discuss about the sony zv e1 is the new cinevlog cinematic features okay so this is pretty cool I'm gonna go ahead and turn her back on. So this is the Cinevlog cinematic feature turned on. I'm just gonna turn it around over to myself real quick. Hey guys, hey. And <clears throat> right now the settings that is on is a Cinetone and it is on auto. So it's just automatically filming um, with like the Cinetone feature theme music on it. Like I told y'all, no professional here. I just know I like what I like, okay? So that's what it's showing right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of go through the different features here to show you different styles of vlogging. So um, on the Cinetone setting, you do have a, do a few different ones you can choose from, which is this clean. That's what clean looks like. Chic. Fresh and mono so that's what it's giving okay so i'm gonna place it back on essential because i think i like that one the best and then you also get to change this other little setting here so instead of it being on auto i can put it on gold and see how it did such a good job with brightening my face back up once I turned around. This is why I like to have it on priority, um, aperture priority, so it can change the aperture for me and make sure it lights up what it needs to light up. But anywho, enough about that. So we have it on gold, we have it on ocean, forest, and that's all. And a lot of the camera people <laughs> or videographers make fun of this whole um cinevlog thing i actually think it's pretty cool because i'm one of those people that don't know how to do any of this um like in editing or professionally i just don't understand how that works so for me to be able to just click a button and change it to make it look like i'm filming a movie i think that's pretty cool and i'm definitely going to be using it in my vlogs like if i'm doing b-roll or if i'm doing some montages i don't find that this is a bad feature to use so I think for vloggers, true vloggers that are just picking up the camera and going, this is going to be an actual really, really good feature. So really quickly, I want to talk about the original audio of the camera. So this is me talking straight through the camera. I actually have my um, sound set on the front of the camera because I found like when I did the auto, it was picking up sounds from so many different other places, especially when you're vlogging and you have like other people in your home, like you can hear people in the other room talking. It was just way too sensitive for me. So I actually turned that feature just to the front of the camera, but I am going to go ahead and give you some test shots or, or sounds from the audio itself. So that way you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. I do plan to pick up maybe like a Rode mic or a Sony, um, a Sony mount mic, just so you can kind of get a better, um, audio and see what you're really getting yourself into when you're you're choosing what type of audio you want to do this is the all-around audio so you can pretty much hear the sound picking up from all angles and you can kind of hear what it sounds like so i don't know if it's a difference from what you guys can hear or if it just sounds regular if it sounds like it did before so let me change it to the back of the mic so this means that you if you're in the back of the mic 
it actually sounds better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this around to point to my bricks so that you guys can't really see a lot of my background and my street and everything. Um, but I'm talking from the back of the mic. So this is supposed to be directional this way and it's supposed to be able to bring you clear audio if I were to be talking from, be from behind the actual camera instead of the front of the camera. This one is now set on audio. I'm gonna kind of like turn the camera around in different directions to see if it's gonna pick up <laughs> the sound from any other direction so that is it is it back at me or does it just sound normal all right guys it was super hot outside so i had to bring this party back into the house okay so you guys can probably hear my husband is vacuuming floor right now um Hopefully that is not destroying our video. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I just switched over to picture profile 11 and I'm just gonna let it do its thing, okay? So I do wanna talk about the stabilization on this camera. I know that's a really, really big feature that a lot of people are wanting to know, like, is it really worth me upgrading for my Sony ZV-1? And I will definitely say, yes, it's kind of insane. Right now, I only have it on active stabilization and we're sitting down, of course. You probably can't really see anything. I'm gonna show you guys the different stabilizations in just one second, but I do wanna show you guys a super cool framing feature that they have before I do that so they've added this insane framing feature to the camera I can, don't know if you guys can tell but I'm trying to be as still as possible basically it's like the technology um, of the iPads right so you know with your iPad it'll follow you wherever you go to keep you in the center of the frame so that's pretty much what's happening here as a matter of fact I'm about to get up and show you guys <laughs> it's probably still trying to follow me I think it works pretty well. I do feel like it kind of gives like this little warped image a little bit because as you guys can see from the Sony ZV-1, looking over here at the Sony ZV-E10, this camera is stationary. It's not moving, but yet it is still following me. So I think that is pretty cool, okay? But I, I think it's gonna be really useful for like whenever I'm sitting the camera down and I'm walking around the house, well not the house, but I'm probably like in one room cleaning up or something and I have the camera going and I don't have to keep moving the camera and angling it. Um, it can be a little bit too much at times, in my opinion, if you have it going like super duper fast. So as long as it's at a good speed or whatever, then it's fine. But this is what it looks like if I were to allow the auto framing to just try to keep me in the center at all times. So I think well, it's pretty cool. What do you guys think? All right, you guys, I have the camera set to intelligent auto and I am in picture profile number four. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do the stabilization test. As of right now, there is no stabilization on and I'm just gonna walk from one side of the house to the other. I also have my Sony mic plugged into this as well. So I don't know what it sounds like, but hopefully it sounds good. But I'm just walking from one side of the house to the other, and we're gonna see what that no stabilization looks like. And notice as I go into each stabilization, the crop does come in a lot on each of them. So this is the steady, and we're gonna walk from one side of the house to the other. Cause like I said, I'm using this in real vlogging situations, and this is what I would do. If I'm walking from room to room, I'm walking through the house. So that is, steady stabilization now let's change it over to active which is what i would be using uh, the stabilization in because if i go into dynamic i'm gonna show you guys the difference between that in just one second but this is what i would typically use to keep the camera steady and stabilized and we're just walking walking back and forth that's what it looks like and that is the active stabilization. And then let's go in one more to dynamic. All right, so when I go into dynamic stabilization, the thing is I can't use my clear image zoom, so it does not work. I'm trying to zoom the camera in right now and it's not doing that. And the thing is like if I turn the corners too hard or whatnot, you probably will see like some black edges in the camera, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing it right now, but it's the most stable. Um, but unfortunately, because of the lens that I'm using, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get away with it. We'll see. So let's walk across the house 
and we are going just walking as I would typically walk around my house. I'm gonna walk back over to the other side. And as you can probably see, there is not a lot of jittery or shakes or anything going on. But like I said, the only thing with this is those corners. You'll probably see the corners. And of course, because of the corners, I lose my um, clear image zoom with, the diamond, with dynamic stabilization. And I just want to come in and show you guys what the Cinevault looks like inside the house. And I'll show it to you guys outside, but this is with the priority, aperture priority. I have it on Cinevault S-Tone Gold. So this is what it looks like. Does it look like I'm filming a little movie or something in my house? And I also have it on Axis Stabilization. As All right, well. and I guess the last thing that we could talk about is the battery life of this camera. So I did make sure that I charged up all my batteries last night, I believe. Um, I do have a total of three batteries. This camera itself only comes with the one battery and there is no USB or USB-C charging cable or anything. You actually have to just purchase your own. So I did go on Amazon and I bought a like charging pack that had two extra batteries in it. And um, they all, are great in my opinion um, and they the batteries themselves actually last pretty long in my opinion right now I do show that this is probably uh, let me see I do show the batteries at 55% and it says I have about an hour and 19 minutes left on this actual card but as far as the battery we've been doing a, a quite a bit. I think I've taken you guys through quite um, a lot of settings. We were outside in the heat and the sun and everything. And we um, also filmed a little bit inside the house. So I do think we used a good amount <laughs> of the battery. I think that's a fair percentage that we have on there. But I will say this with my Sony ZV-E1, I have about eight batteries. And if I'm doing an, a full day of recording with that particular camera or vlogging, I do find that it's very easy for me to tap into the majority of those eight batteries. Um, with this particular camera, I don't really see that I have to change out the battery during like um, a day of filming because the battery lasts super long. It's a much larger battery anyway, so of course it does last a lot longer, but um, it's 100% much better than the Sony ZV-E, I'm sorry, than the Sony ZV-1's battery, um, for sure. So I will say that. You won't have to buy 50 million batteries for your camera. I think I forgot to mention that this camera does still offer that amazing product showcase, which I absolutely love, especially with this 15 millimeter lens, because honey, look at the background. It is blurry, okay? And what I love about the product showcase is how fast it is. I mean, in 98% of the situations, it's going to go ahead and capture whatever it is that I'm trying to throw up to it and blur that background out extremely fast. So yeah, I absolutely love the product showcase. Only thing with product, product showcase is I like to make sure that my eyes are in focus at all times because your girl's kind of blind and she can't see. So when I'm kind of far away from the camera and I can't see it, I can't tell if I'm in focus or not. So I like to have the eye autofocus on. What's really great is that if when you turn the product showcase off, I can automatically get back to my eye being tracked. But if it's on, it doesn't necessarily track my eye. However, I still find that it works just fine without having the product showcase mode on. If I put something up to the camera, it focuses on it, but just not as fast um, as it would if the product showcase mode was on. So as you can see, it takes a little bit longer to focus, but eventually it does. The camera also does apps that you can connect to. Um, it's not the Sony imaging Edge, I think it was called that like the Sony ZV-1 and all the other cameras do use is something different um, I did try to pair my phone with it like fresh out of the box um, but then I got so frustrated because it was taking so long so I just decided to leave it doing whatever it was doing it was probably me I don't know but I have heard some people have had a lot of trouble connecting their cameras to the app um, but I will probably give it a try a little bit later on and see if what it does but it's not really um a make or break for me because I found that even though like I downloaded the app and stuff, I, I really ever use those apps on my phone because 
your camera, there's a camera on your phone. Like if you want, if you really want to capture something, just take it with your phone. The iPhone camera is great in itself. So yeah, um, I don't really use the app. What I actually think will be pretty fun for us to do, just to kind of give us, you know, us vloggers, okay, a real idea or depiction of what this camera does. I'm gonna go ahead and use it in a real live vlogging situation or vlogging test. I'm actually about to get ready to go to Target because I need a new pillow for my bed. That's literally all that I need. Um, so. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this camera in like a real life vlogging situation. So we're gonna actually add a little mini vlog test at the end. I know we walked around the house and outside and kind of showed like the different features of the camera, but I want you guys to kind of see just for my vloggers because I know that when I was researching this camera, I saw a lot of people in their studios, okay, talking about this camera and what it does. And they showed like little clips of them using this and that and the third. But I wanna see an actual vlog, okay? Using the actual camera, like on an actual vlog vlog, yeah, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready. We're gonna go to uh, Target, because we love Target. We're gonna pick up a pillow. Might even start by Starbucks. So let's go. Test as if I would vlog in a normal, typical. <laughs> as if I would vlog in like a normal situation, which I'm in Target. I'm always in Target. I'm always vlogging in Target. And then there's the Babe back there. He's just getting different angles for me. So yeah, um, this is pretty much what everything looks like. It looks really, really nice. The blur at the background looks so good. I absolutely love it. This concludes the video. I hope this really helped you guys determine whether or not you want to maybe upgrade your Sony ZV-1 or ZV-10 to the new Sony ZV-E1. So far, so good. Like there's a lot of settings. There's a lot of things that you could do with this camera. Just being that it's a full frame camera, 
So it's a lot more stuff that you can do with this. And I am learning each and every day. Like I said, I am no expert. Um, if you're interested in actually watching my vlogs on this new camera, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to my vlog channel, which is Amber Shiny's TV. And I will be uploading new vlogs there that shows the image quality and all that good stuff of the Sony ZV-E1. Not only that, we also will be uploading a new video this week about the lens comparison. If there's any more questions that you have, definitely leave those questions down in the comment section as well. Give this video a thumbs up. Head over to my Instagram page where I also do share a lot of tips about cameras and creator content and creator tips and growth on YouTube and all that good stuff. Thank you again so much for choosing to watch this video and have a great day. Peace. Come on, let's start that. Hell no. Go away. There's a wasp. There's a wasp. Go away. Go away. I'm gonna turn this fan on your behind. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Nope, because I can't close the open the door. It's gonna fly inside. Was that a grasshopper? What the heck? It's too much going on out here in the outdoors. Okay. And show y'all a few different what the freak is going on? It is bugs everywhere. <laughs> Bay! My, my God. Trying to move so that it can't catch me, but it's so fast that it's catching me. 